scary. It's just so weird because we just kept it so quiet for so long. Yeah, that's why I'm having such a hard time. Mm -hmm. guys and welcome to this week's vlog. I know that we have been kind of MIA for a little bit and we're going to give you guys an update. So the purpose of this video is it's going to be a little bit of a darker toned video than what we normally do but this is us in real life. This isn't us faking anything and we try to be as honest with you guys as we possibly can but there's something that we have never told you guys. We've been holding it right here close to our chest as close as we possibly can. And we feel that now is the time to go ahead and tell you guys what exactly has been going on in both of our lives. About a year and a half ago, I went to the doctor and I just went for a routine checkup. It was just my yearly physical, that's all it was. And this was my first physical outside of the military. This was 2000, early 2017, so almost two years out of the military. And there was nothing, nothing in particular that we were thinking that was going on. Nothing that we had any thoughts or feelings that we decided that we were going to go ahead and go to the doctor. And Jessica just scheduled us all to get our yearly physical. And I went to the, went to the doctor, had all my blood tests done, all, I had my, my checkup, and about... About a day and a half, two days later, after my checkup, the doctor's office called me up and said, hey, we need you, need you to give us a call back immediately. It's very important. So I said, okay, sure, whatever. I was at work at this time. I couldn't, I couldn't get to my phone because where I work, where I work on Shreve Air Force Base, I can't have my phone. So I had about four missed calls from the doctor's office all saying you need to come in immediately and this was all within probably about three or four hours. So I said, you know, this is, I really need to give them a call. So I gave them a call. They said, hey, we need to schedule a doctor's appointment for today. It just cannot wait for tomorrow. It has to happen today. I said, okay, this is, this is very interesting. And I had really no clue what, what they were going to tell me. I just knew that when a doctor tells you this, it's never something good. So went to the doctor, called, first of all, called up Jessica and said, hey, you need to meet me at the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. She met me at the doctor's office. We went in and they said, Sam, your kidneys are failing. At that point in time, my kidneys were working roughly at about 20%, which is far, far, far below anything that you should ever be working at. Your, your kidneys never work at 100%. But at 20%, we're, we're looking at a severe degradation of your life. So went and saw my doctor again, a, a day or two later, I think it was. And he said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you over to a nephrologist. A nephrologist is a kidney doctor. And he says, this is, this is the type of stuff that's going to happen. Be willing to expect this, that, and the third. I said, okay, awesome. So I get over to the doctor's office and, or over to my nephrologist. And he, he says, hey, what, this is, this is what's going on. We're going to run some more tests. We don't know what exactly is going on with your kidneys. We just know that, we just know that there's something wrong. So they ran all these tests. They ran a biopsy. They uh, ran all these, just a ton of tests, test after test after test. It seemed like almost every single day I was going in for a new blood test. So I got very used to getting a needle stuck in my arm and we get all the tests back and we find out that it's called Wegner's disease. So what Wegner's disease is, is basically my immune system looks at my kidneys as a problem. So my immune system says your the, the kidneys need to go. It's like if you get a an organ transplant and your body rejects it. Basically my, re, my body rejected my kidneys, didn't think that my kidneys were my kidneys, mm -hmm. were someone else's kidneys. I, I don't know exactly what my body thought, but my body destroyed my kidneys. So fast forward a, a few days later, the doctor sticks me on some basically chemotherapy. It's a very, very low level type of chemotherapy. Now this is the lowest level of chemotherapy you could ever have. 
and it it did nothing to me except for slow my immune system down so that my we could see if my kidneys would heal. So we, we went to go see if, if the kidneys would heal and that didn't work at all. The doctor said, okay, I wanna put you on dialysis. They put a tube into my chest right here that goes from my chest right here all the way down to about right here, about to my heart, so that they could basically clean my blood on a dialysis machine. So we wanted to do this to see if we could take all the pressure off my kidneys to see if the kidneys would go ahead and regain, regain function, because this does happen sometimes in dialysis patients. They'll, the doctor will, if, if they have even a, a slight idea that the kidneys will come back to life, just from giving them a break, they'll go ahead and do this. It's, it's a very invasive procedure, and it with some people it has great success. With me, it did not. So after about three or four months, the doctor said, listen, I, I don't think that this is gonna get any better. I think our next step is to go ahead and get you on the transplant list. But during that time, we need to go ahead and get you on a different type of dialysis or get you a long-term fix for dialysis. So it was either getting dialysis, just have a needle stuck into my arm, or I do dialysis at home, which currently I do dialysis at home. So the dialysis at home, I do it every single night. It is very, very easy on my body. It happens while I'm sleeping, so I, I don't even feel anything, nothing. And it's liquid versus it's, blood. It's, it's a liquid that goes inside of my, my stomach instead of them actually cleaning my blood. It's a lot more gentler on your it's body. It's much more gentle on my body. So that's where we stand right now. Mm -hmm. And we've been, we've been wanting to tell this to you guys for quite a while now. We had a really hard time figuring out how to tell you guys or when to tell you guys. One of the main reasons why we want to do this is because there might be someone out there that is going through the same thing. Maybe not the same disease, maybe not the same exact, exact same path as what I'm going through, but you may know a family member. You may know someone that is going through the exact same thing that I'm going through that is about to go the, through the exact same thing that I'm going through. And it's scary. It's very scary. But if you know that person, we, we really want to let you know we're here. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, if you have anything that we might be able to, basically anything that we might be able to answer. If we can give somebody a peace of mind while they are going through dialysis or about ready to go through, through dialysis, we would absolutely love to share anything that we possibly can. You can message us, you can do whatever. You can ask us to do another video mm -hmm. on something. We we will be an open book with this. Whatever it is that you, you wanna ask, we'll tell you everything that we know. I'm really sorry that this is a little bit heavier of a video, but this is something that we've, we've wanted to say quite a bit. Thank you guys a lot for just sticking through this and listening to this video. I know that this isn't the, the most exciting video and I promise you we are not gonna dwell on dialysis. Thank you guys for dropping by and hanging out and we will see you next time. Do you want to do the honors? <laughs>